our whole family got exposed to COVID, and so we all were recuperating at home. David told me he was having problems breathing and he wasn't feeling well. And I told David, we need to take you to the emergency room. I was, couldn't catch my breath. I was feeling horrible. So David was taken for Methodist burning, and he was taken to Methodist Texan, and then he was transferred to the ICU. That's when the doctor called me and said, uh, this is serious, David's gonna go ahead and need to be intubated. The doctor said, look, I'm gonna read with you, Dave. And he grabbed my hand and he prayed and it was a very touching prayer. And he was like grabbing my hand and we were praying through it. It gave me a sense of peace. And then he goes, okay, this is for all the marbles, Dave. This is it. I said, okay, let's do this, doc. And then I went down. But I thought it meant a lot to me that he cared so much that he held my hand in prayer. And like two days later, our son was not feeling well and I had to get him hospitalized as well. My husband was in the ICU and our son was right down the hall from him, prone as well in the telemetry unit. And our son was in the hospital for four days and David was in the hospital for a month. So I would drive around the hospital and pray for him. And I would sleep in the parking lot because I couldn't come home and have my son's room be empty as well as my husband's. It was a little much. I have to say I fought all the way through to, to fight this illness, even when I was down. But leaving it, being able to go and, and get to the non-COVID side and ended up at the rehab center. That was a game changer. So Mr. Davila came in about the beginning of March when I initially evaluated him. It did take three people to transfer him bed to chair and he expressed um, the goal of wanting to walk. And I told him, we'll work on it day by day. You have to take those little gains every day. And then all of a sudden when he's standing, I'm like, hey, you stood from a lower surface today. You're standing for two minutes, you know? So every little bit of gain that he made, like I made sure that we capitalized on that and then kept riding that good wave. He really wanted to gain function and use of his left arm and upper extremity. We improved in his range of motion and that just gave him a lot of confidence. And then he said, Val, I really want to get strong. I want to gain some strength. So I said, all right, you tell me what you want. I'm gonna give it to you. Everybody there at Methodist Rehab was positive and you need that positive feedback because it helps you grow, helps you want to do it stronger, helps you want to do more. My motivator is my family. My motivator is I want to walk. I want to get better for my family. It took a month just to get him to start walking. We would walk every day. We'd warm up his legs and I'm like, okay, let's walk. And then it was first like five feet and then 10 feet and then 20, 30, 40. What I really admired was he set his mind to something and he worked day by day to reach that goal. Give us a thumbs up. And seeing him reach that goal and not only reach it, but like crush it was amazing. Mr. Davila is going home tomorrow. He's reached all of his goals and he's gonna walk out of here. Thank you so much. I'm grateful to Methodist Hospital Stone Oak Rehab Center for getting me through this. Those folks were absolutely a godsend. I am grateful for my wife, for everything she did for me. I'm grateful to my, my daughter and my son who have been so helpful to me while I've come back. It hasn't been easy. Nothing's easy because COVID takes a hit. It has taken a life to so many people. So you feel really blessed to, to have made it through and survive because I got real close. Yes. I got real close, I almost didn't make it. And then when I did make it, I was hurting really bad. And it was the folks at Methodist that helped me get through it and made the complete difference.